Well, of course, he was only a young boy. I think he came with another Irish lad. Uh, and I just joined United. Of course, they were building just uh, after the Munich disaster. And I saw him in the gym down at our training ground in Salford. Two uh, young boys and absolutely tremendous skill. As I say, United building up after the crash. We had had a bad start to the season, and we nearly went down that season. But in 63, and I remember the game here, it was at Old Trafford. And I didn't play. I was in the stand with Sir Matt Busby and uh, George Plessed against West Brom. And it was absolutely magnificent. It really was the start of the sort of side that United had in that 60s of being a great side with the likes of uh, Bobby Charlton, Nobby Styles, Pat Crerand, uh, David Heather, and of course this young lad who had come from Northern Ireland, young. I mean, when I came down from England, I was thin as well. I think I weighed about eight stone. I think Bessie weighed about seven stone. But uh, you could see that he had, he had everything. He had the skill, he was brave, he was good in the air. I mean, it sounds all cliches, you know, but he was good with both feet, he was brave. He scored goals, he, uh, he never stopped running. Ma magnificent player. Had he any weaknesses at all? Can't think of any. Uh, probably after, in the sort of, uh, the middle 60s going on towards the late 60s, when we really were a very, very good side. And we went to um, Benfica. We had taken a 3-2 lead. They were one of the great sides, probably the, the greatest side in Europe at that time. And we went there and we beat them 5-1. And Bessie had an absolutely magnificent game. And of course, it was the time of the Beatles as well. And he was a good looking guy, black hair with long hair, uh, single. And after that game, of course, he was called, I think it was El Beatle or whatever it was, you know. And he just, if it was a weakness in him, he, he maybe at that time just began to be a little bit greedy. You know, sometimes he would beat he always beat three or four men, but he was trying to beat five or six. So if it was a weakness, it maybe was around that time that maybe he should have passed the ball when, uh, when he earlier on. But uh, it, it, that weakness is not uh, a weakness as such. It is uh, just maybe a little bit greedy, but cliche. Mm. <laughs> but of course, when, at times, you know, I mean, he would. We would do you know football? You know, just when, a bit. well, just when, a bit. when you're messing about in there and you knock a ball out, and Bestie's got it, and he was on the flanks, and he would beat one or two, and the ball should be yours, you know. And he'd say, Hey, Bestie, come on, let's give it to me. And he, he would beat another one, and he'd say, Yeah, bang, in the back of the net, you know. So you say, You little. B <laughs> <laughs> was he a complex person at all? There's a. I mean, Bestie's had. Um, as you are in, in the public eye, you uh, get a tremendous amount of publicity. And sometimes, and a, and a great many of the times, of course, it's uh, not good. You know, and we've seen Bestie over the last 10 or 20 years, you know, had uh, adverse publicity. But the one thing that people don't know, the people who know him do, and he is a terrific lad. He, he is a lovely lad, and he has no, he doesn't do any harm to anybody. He does a lot of good stuff, which is never really uh, taken out and come out in the media, whether it be television, radio, or the, or the press. And that's the one thing that a lot of people don't know about Bessie. They think he's a sort of, you know, sort of star with a big, and he's, uh, you know, he's always out doing the, sort of the wrong things. But George Bess is a lovely, lovely lad. 